Hello, it is Sunday, August 22nd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword, Daily Solve. It is Sunday, which means it is the longest crossword of the week, or I suppose at least it is the largest grid of the week, which usually makes for the longest solve of the week. Uh, Not always, but in my case, I would say pretty much that tends to be the case. It is actually late Saturday night where I am. It's 11 p.m. here, UK time, and this is actually when the Sunday puzzle is released. That is, I guess, 6 p.m. New York time, which would be the puzzle's native time. For whatever reason, the Sunday puzzle and the Monday puzzle both come out early. I don't know entirely why that is, but I'm taking advantage of that scheduling quirk because I have an early morning tomorrow and I don't trust myself to uh, get up, have the whole crossword solved, edited, and published in time for when I need to be out the door. So I am uh, in a first for this series. I am recording this video late the night before, and I'm a bit tired, I have to say. I'm flagging a bit, so we'll just have to see if that affects the solve too badly. Um, There is a comment, an interesting comment to read. I don't see any major corrections from yesterday, but Brian D. left an interesting comment. He said, there are some rules to the times you seem unsure of. Every puzzle from Sunday to Thursday has a theme. Friday and Saturday are referred to specifically as themeless. Sundays are the only crosswords with titles. So that is interesting. I actually never really uh, picked up on the consistency of that pattern, which I suppose doesn't reflect very well on me, but we can see here that this is a Sunday puzzle, and indeed it does have a title, Resettling Letterings. And uh, according to these rules, we will be having a theme today, and it will be something that relates to the title Resettling Letterings, whatever that means. So uh, thank you very much, Brian D., for uh, filling me in on that missing bit of knowledge with respect to the pattern that the crosswords follow. Uh, I feel chagrined <laughs> for not knowing not knowing this. But let's move on to the puzzle. Let's get it going so I can get to sleep. This is a puzzle by Stephen McCarthy, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And are we ready to get started? Let's say that we are. Okay. So, what a drawbridge may bridge. That would be a, oops, a moat, not a mount, as I almost typed. In that case, um, it could be thus, or maybe ergo, but I think thus, well, or then. Let's, uh, let's see here. Sign me up. I'm, oh, it's none of the things I said. Sign me up would be I'm in, and in that case then would be if so, which is a better, that's a better answer than any of the options I I said. Uh, binge is too much for short. Um, presumably this is ODs, overdoses. Oh, here we go. This looks like, this looks like a part of a theme here. 2004 film about a group of maligners. And maligners is all in capital letters. And then we can see the next clue. It may be put, it might be put on stage, excuse me, oof, losing it. It might be put on for stage pageantries. And that is also in capital letters. So I don't really know what that's getting at yet. We'll have to see. Let's check the crosses here on moat. My two blank. 2015 Claudia Harrington children's book. Hmm. Not really up on modern children's literature, I have to admit, unfortunately. Uh, top. Top could be one up. Not completely convinced of that, but it could be. Three is appliance brand since 1934. I think this is something like Amana or Amani. <clears throat> So let's see, if we did put one up in there with M, let's see, what is this? What do, what do we get here? That one's blank, my bad. Uh, that one's on me, is what this would be. My two moms, perhaps? 
let's see, annual film festival where Saw and Get Out premiered. Oh, uh, this is familiar. It, Sun Something does seem does seem familiar to me as a film festival, but I can't bring it to mind, unfortunately. And the 2000 film about a group of maligners. What is this? I wonder, is it, could it be a anagram or something? I'm not sure. On the cross here, we have pea shooters with a question mark. So it is some sort of pun. A complete travesty starting with an F. I can really feel my brain <laughs> working at a slower pace right now, I have to admit. Feature of many British accents. Feature of many British accents. Soft R's? Um, Amelia, but no, it wouldn't be soft because Amelia Bedelia is a, a maid actually from children's literature. So we've got maybe a minor children's literature theme going on that might not be related to the main theme. And it just occurred to me that the name of the puzzle, as I said before, is resettling letterings. So maybe there is an anagram thing. In other words, could it be that could it be that the name of the film is composed of the letters in maligners? Could it be an anagram? The letters M E A I S do all appear in maligners. Oh, Mean Girls. Yeah, very clever. Wow. That's very well done. Mean Girls or maligners. And Mean Girls is an anagram of Maligners. That's very clever. It might be put on for stage pageantries. So I'll be very, I'll be very curious to see how these all work out. That's very good. Oh, a complete travesty is a farce, of course. Oh, and Sundance. What was I thinking? Yes. Sundance is, of course, the annual film festival at which Saw and Get Out premiered. Yes, that is correct. Um, so here we have once again pea shooters. I don't really see what that what that's getting at, unfortunately. And then here we have avoids a bogey, perhaps. Um, a bogey, I think, is um, golf terminology for a particular score. So this would probably be pars. In other words, you hit the, you um, the correct number. The uh, what is it? The <laughs> intended maximum number of strokes on a given hole. The par. They may be blown. A gasket may be blown. Gaskets may be blown. That's a um, car part, automobile part. Pea shooters. Could this be tendrils? World War II hero informally. Ike, I suppose. Eisenhower. Dear Blank Hansen, 2017 Tony winning musical. Dear Evan Hansen. I see, see advertisements for that musical on the London Underground all the time. Pea shooters does look like tendrils. I don't know that I'm fully understanding the what that is getting at exactly. Like some casts. I suppose all-star casts is what this is. You might be marveling at this as it whizzes by. Maglev trains? Maglev train? That's a... a um, what is it? Magnetic levitation or something? It's a train technology by which the train actually is uh, is raised above the track with uh, the force of magnets. Boy, this is very clever. Very clever. This uh, this theme and these clues. These theme clues, like zebras and lions. Well, they both have manes, so they are maned. A voice with an echo. An echo is capitalized, which in this case makes it a brand name. And this would be Alexa, the, um, is it Amazon's voice assistant, I think? Rub it in. Rub it in. Gloat. Gloat, I suppose. If you rub in, you know, your victory, for instance, you gloat about it. And then here we have prefix with colonial, neocolonial. That is correct. Looks correct to me. A series of questions maybe is an exam 
And then, as we've seen a couple of times recently, that maybe means this isn't necessarily a literal definition here, um, but this might be an example of the thing in question. So a series of questions isn't necessarily literally an exam, but it might be, an exam might be a series of questions. And this is gloat, we'll finish that off. Here we have many relationships are instigated on one. Um, dating site, I think, if we rearrange the letters of instigated. Oops, dating site, nope, dating site. Disrupt an online meeting in a way. Could this be Zoom bomb or something? Zoom being the video chat service that's gained such prominence in the last year. I bet it'll be Zoom something. I don't know if it's necessarily Zoom bomb. A little too silky, maybe. Not sure offhand, but let's look at this. This looks like this might disprove my Zoom. It is what it is and others. Oh no, Zoom is correct. Uh, it's a truism. Truisms is what is what this is. It is what it is. I suppose it is tautologically true. It, it uh, sort of redundant. Aftmost masts on ships. That would be mizzens, the mizzen mast. Who can hear you scream in space? <laughs> no one. No one can hear you scream in space, famously. And ending with poly would be a polygon, a many-sided shape. Wonder Woman and others, they are Amazons. And a score after seven points, maybe. Um, I don't know. I assume that is sport-related, but I'm not sure. Give one's blessing to... Anoint? No, no, that's too many letters. Let's look here. Burdened. Laden, perhaps? In other words, if you loaded up a, you know, an ox's cart or something like that, it could be laden. I'm not sure. It has more coastline than California, surprisingly. That's interesting. What would be surprising? Maybe if a state like Maine had more coastline than California. That would be surprising. Uh, so surprising that I'm not very confident in that guess. Um, I can really hear that my voice is ready to <laughs> sleep and be recharged. Um, let's see. That would work with Leighton. Can I look at some other crosses to try and confirm or deny? They can be noiseless while stalking prey. Well, if this were main, this I does fit in noiseless. Let's try out main and see what happens. Lick, say. So lick could be the, uh, I mean, the most obvious meaning, obviously, would just to sort of rub something with your tongue. Boy, that's a disgusting way to <laughs> think about the concept of licking. Um, but it could be uh, to to beat soundly. Um, in other words, to to win convincingly. Um, it could be like a salt lick, I guess, a puck of salt for an animal. Um, and I'm not. I'm somehow not seeing how any of these things fit this space. So, oh, burden. Oh, this is funny. So we have. Didn't we have burdens? Oh, we have burdened up here and then burden here. Anyway, this is onus. In other words, the onus is on you. The burden is on you. The burden of proof, the onus. Uh, oh, score after seven points, maybe. So this could be in tennis. <clears throat> add out, the counterpart to add in. Uh, when the match is tied... The, you know, I used to I used to be able to explain this better, but I, it's um, essentially you have to win while already ahead in tennis, I believe. And if you win, if you would have won from a tied position, you get the advantage, but then the opponent can get the advantage back and it can keep sort of swinging back and forth. Anyway, that's essentially how that works. So burdened could be, it could be laden. That's actually looking fairly plausible. And then give one's blessing to... Oh, allow, I suppose. 
and then lick say, oh, is wet. Mm. Once again, I didn't take into account the say, lick say. So this is the, the meaning of wet that relates to the tongue. Uh, and what it's saying here is that lick say, in other words, well, you would wet something by licking it, um, but that's not necessarily intrinsically the meaning. It's just, well, that would happen. All right. They can be noiseless while stalking prey. Uh, lionesses? Yeah, very good. I am loving this theme. This is fantastic. Larson, who wrote The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. That's Stig Larson. The late Stig Larson. Poo Poo. Um, to sort of denigrate something or dismiss it out of hand. Uh, but I'm not seeing it immediately. Old cable TV initials. So this would be an old cable television network, presumably. I'm not sure offhand. Let's keep looking. Uh, I just realized how much of the grid we've skipped. This is interesting. We have this swath of fill over on the, um, just running down the western coastline, if you will, as in the coastline of Maine. So that was Maine. So that is actually surprising. I am, as Stephen McCarthy, the constructor here, predicted, I am surprised to learn that Maine has more coastline than California. That must be some sort of fractal situation. All right, let's look here. Tight fitting, that's snug. A little too silky, maybe. Oh, glib, perhaps. In other words, um, you, you're, you're speaking in a way that's, that's a bit too slick. Um, a little too smart for, for your own good, I suppose. So this could be Zoom Bomb. In other words, to, I guess in this case, to if someone is on a is on a virtual meeting, you would pop in behind them, as happened on that incredibly classic uh, BBC news report with the expert on uh, North Korea. I think his children repeatedly zoom bombed in the background a few years ago. That was before all of the uh, video conferencing really took off. I think anyway. Counterpart of L plural. So this is um, the. Uh, plural uh, feminine pronoun in French, and then the masculine counterpart of that is il, I-L-S. And gives fuel to would be Stokes, presumably. Um, ba -ba -ba. Valuable load for a mule. I wonder if this could mean a drug mule. And would this maybe be a kilo? I don't know, that seems like a bit of a reach. Title meaning commander. Well, maybe, because this would be Amir, I believe. Just. Just could be, I mean, it could be just in the sense of justice, in other words, even-handed. But I think in this case, it means just as in only or merely. Showing the effects of an all-nighter say. This is very appropriate to me. Could it be bleary-eyed? I feel very bleary-eyed at the moment, I must say. I don't know if I look that way, but it's how I feel. Maybe I do look that way. Anyway, the drug mule situation. Well, at least I think it's a drug mule, and I do think it is kilo. A certain radio format. Could be oldies. Um, classic pop music, in other words. Explorers of the Untraversed. Adventurers? Ah, this is great. What a fun theme. International Cosmetics Company, blank. I'm guessing it's Rocher, and I'm not familiar with this company, but the reason I suspect it's Rocher is because very few names start with YV, and Eve in French, Y-V-E-S, does, does begin that way. So I assume this is Yves Rocher. Fill in a brief, um, I'll do a little debrief of this crossword at the end of it. Common April activity nowadays. Um, I think this refers to filing your taxes in the United States or nowadays often e-filing them. And I can't shake my fist too hard at this deployment of an E word, which I would typically, um, uh, 
take great umbrage at, but I but I can't because the United States federal government does in fact refer to this as e-filing. So fair enough. What is this? On it, Captain. I, sir. Vietnamese sandwich is a bon mi. I haven't had a good bon mi in a while. Did I spell that right? 1980s gaming initials, NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, so I guess I did. Um, you should always bring it to a competition. Your A game. You should always bring your A game to the crossword solve. You can chew on it. Chew the chew the fat. No, you don't. You wouldn't say chew on the fat, would you? Chew on it. Unenthusiastic. I feel as though both of these should be quite obvious, and I'm not immediately seeing it, which is irritating. Appetizers or desserts at a diner. Um, menu something? Um, oh, appetizers or desserts. So it's just one of these two. Menu page, I suppose. Ah, that's actually very well clued, because a diner tends to have a very extensive multi-page menu, as opposed to some restaurants might have appetizers and desserts and everything in between all on the same page. So on a diner, each one of those might be a, might be its own page. That's well done. Old cable TV initials. Um, TNN, maybe? Poo poo. Um, sniff at, maybe? Scoff, sniff at? Let's say, yeah, unenthusiastic would be tepid. And you can chew on it. Chew on... Sap as in tree sap? Uh, writing done graphically. Typography? Oh, this isn't sniff at. It's more direct and uh, more condescending. It is sneer at. So this is indeed typography. Yeah. No, it's not. Writing done graphically. No, of course it's not typography. There's no T. There's no T in graphically. So let's see. Um, we have the graphy, which means we are left with I C A L L calligraphy. Yes, very good. And that that makes sense. Sort of graphical script. Okay, group trying to sack a QB. I'm not sure. Let's look at the cross. Blank merci. French cry. Dieu? God, sort of thanks to God, perhaps? Five-letter word that replaces a four-letter word. Ah, that's that's very clever. A bleep to bleep out a uh, profane language. Group time trying to sack a QB. Well, presumably this is D and then another word because I can't think of any words that start with DL. So could it be D line? Maybe defensive line? That seems pretty plausible. Uh, it's, oh, let's see. So this is the second part of a two part clue, or rather, a single clue with a two part answer. It's multi layered. Oh, I see. No, it's not. These are two, these are actually two separate clues and two separate answers. Uh, but there one one depends on the other. So one sixteen across is it's multi layered, and then one twenty across is one way to cook a blank. Interesting. So could it be some kind of pastry or something with more than one layer? Let's look at the crosses. One hundred eleven down is sine over tangent. Um, I mean it looks like sin divided by tan, but these are. Uh, this is referring to the trigonometric functions, sine and tangent. And, I mean, I certainly would not have jumped to this immediately without that C. Well, I mean, I would have seen sine and tangent, but I would absolutely not have remembered that I, the answer must be cosine, I suppose, um, based on that C. <laughs> that's that's uh, all I have to go on, so I'm going to say that it is. Oops, where did I go? I lost where I was. What did I do? It's multi-layered. Oh, an onion, I suppose. And then one way to cook an onion would be to saute it, presumably. A major, oh no, yeah, to saute it. Major Japanese carrier. 
Often when you see carrier, that means an air carrier specifically, so an airline, um, ANA, I believe is Japan's largest airline actually. Kill Bill co-star Lou, Lucy Lou, so that fits with saute. And then finally, obscure without would be to blot out. So the saute, it all fits. Great. They know the drill abbreviation. Um, a drill sergeant, presumably, and it's they, so it's plural. So sergeants with an S. Uh, children's author Blyton, uh, Enid Blyton, I believe. It's another children's author. We've had a few of those. The Trojans lacked the foresight to turn this down. Oh, very, very good. Gift horse, right? They should have looked that one in the mouth or in the stomach, I suppose. Make over as a ship. Uh, refit, right? Refit the ship to make it over. Not even. Um, let alone, maybe? Uh, let's see. They may be, no. They may be set by industry groups, standards, regulations, STDs. And then not even, um, less than, I suppose, if, right, so uh, less than, in other words, not reaching the amount, not even the amount in question. Girl in the old curiosity shop. Um, I, oops, I don't know. It could be Nell or Ness. Uh, and we'll, I suppose we'll see if it's Ness, if these both look like plurals, right? That'll be an, an easy indication. So be taken aback. So I think it's Nell, not Ness, because this could be real. To real from the, the force of the impact. Um, word after hard or before short. Uh, sell, hard, the hard sell, in other words, a, a very intense sales pitch or sell short to uh, give short shrift. And here we have a crowd. They say three is a crowd. Two's company, three is a crowd. Is that what the saying is? It has three legs. It has 104 down legs. It has three legs. An easel has three legs, an, uh, an art stand. No need to make me a plate. I ate. That rhymes. Um, content people or content people could be either one of those. Uh... So I suppose what this is getting at is people who make content, in other words, creators. And that's, it's got this question mark to suggest there's sort of a pun going on, which I suppose what that's suggesting is that the expected way to read this would be as content people, people who are content. But I don't know that that's where my brain went initially, simply because that's sort of an awkward sounding phrase. Anyway, let's move on. Like that'll ever happen. You wish, apropos of, um, apropos of, I'm not seeing that immediately, word repeated in, I blank, I blank, it's off to work, I go. I owe? Is that a play on the seven dwarves, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work, we go? I don't think I've ever heard I O I O. It's off to work. I go, but but I can understand. The, I mean, I get the joke, so <laughs> we'll put it in there. Apropos of as to maybe influence sway presumably here, and then preferring one's own company, perhaps a social. I suppose rings up. If you ring someone up, you call them on the phone. Battling. Uh, if if two parties are battling, they are at war. Oh, I, I think I got something wrong. Pioneering gangster rap group, because surely this would be NWA. And so calls looks incorrect. Rings up. Well, now that I have calls on the brain, is this not NWA? Blank meanie. 2010 hit. Eeny meeny, maybe? I actually don't know the hit in question. Yikes. Group that hasn't yet found what it's looking for. And group is abbreviated GRP, so this too will be a group. I think this is SETI, the um, 
search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which certainly has not found what it's looking for. Ah, so rings up is dials. So NWA was correct. And this could be Eni. I don't know. It could be Genie. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, it's not Genie because G does not appear in this phrase. Healthy eaters may give this a wide berth. So it could be E. And I suppose what this means is this is something that is not particularly healthy because healthy eaters would steer clear of it. They would give it a wide berth. So what would this be? Some sort of bread, maybe? White bread? I think that works. White bread, indeed. Not particularly healthy. Get to move on, quaintly. I think this came up maybe last week. It would be, uh, oops, highs, as in high and away. Mana blank. Mana key, I want to say. K-E-A, I think. Geological landmark of some sort. Justin Trudeau by birth. Well, it definitely looks like Ottawin, doesn't it? He must be from Ottawa. Wouldn't have known that off the top of my head, but uh, pretty unmistakable with the crosses. Don't believe it. Don't believe a lie, I, I presume. Opposite of never. Um, opposite of never. Would it be always or often of some something that means that? Annual British Acting Award. Um, oh boy, this is this is driving me mad. Um, oh, this is actually this is absolutely on the tip of my tongue, and I'm is driving me bonkers. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to move on because it's it's just driving me crazy. Okay. <laughs> Rise. Um, I'm not sure what that is getting at exactly. Mike Krzyzewski to Duke basketball fans. Uh, I don't know. This white bread is looking kind of weird. Maybe key is wrong. Hot dog topper. Could it be slaw? Would you put slaw on a hot dog? Toni Morrison title heroin. Oh, um, oh boy, here's another one that's right on the tip of my tongue. Oh boy, I in the case of both of these answers, it's almost as though I can see the shape of the word in my mind and I can't make it resolve. I don't know if that's because I'm tired or if it's simply because I, I just, just having a sort of moment around these. Um, oh boy, this is this is absolutely killing me right now. <laughs> it's driving me nuts because it's not. It's, it's one thing if I just don't know something, I'll just move on. But this is these are really gnawing at me. French city near the Belgian border. Now here's an example of one that I don't I don't know uh, well enough, but we'll probably see with crosses. Unlike these other two answers, where I really definitely know them and just. I'm just having a some sort of black hole in my mind. City nicknamed the old Pueblo. Uh, I'm not sure offhand. Sort of schematic for Christian education. Um, catechism, I would I would think. Did I spell that right? I think so. Okay. What is this? Rise. All oh, right. Yeah. What is rise? I'm still not seeing it for some reason. Responds to brisk weather. So I think this is getting at, the pun is very straightforward. It's getting at burr. In other words, you're cold, uh, shivers. Olivier, Lawrence Olivier. Ah, sorry. Boy, that was driving me absolutely bananas. Oh, it feels incredibly good. To get that out, just in the sense of almost needing to sort of sneeze or something, just to expel the thing that was blocking up my brain. Okay, great. Lion blank, lion tamer. 
airline passenger request. Um, not sure what that's getting at precisely. Hot dog topper. Oh, we've got two hot dog toppers. That's kind of funny. So maybe that's slaw, and this presumably is chili. You could top a hot dog with chili, a chili dog. Cool one, a cool cat. Airline passenger request. Oh, an airline passenger may request an aisle. Oh, yes. Okay. And then the French French city is, is Lil, L-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Yes. Okay. Probably could have gotten that, but it just wasn't, it wasn't really seeing it. Oh, rise. Yes. Rise is climb. In other words, if a graph is rising, you could say it's climbing. Opposite of never. Now this is still, I'm, this is not something that's on the tip of my tongue. I just don't, uh, don't know why, but for some reason I'm not understanding what it's getting at. Maybe highs is wrong because sometime could be, get some move on. Maybe it's not highs. I don't know. Yeah, this whole little area here is not very confident about it. Um, hot dog topper. Yeah, it could be slaw. Does that help with this time? I really don't know. Let's let's move back up. We haven't really actually explored the northeastern quadrant of the puzzle pretty much at all. So let's let's ease into that feature of oh silent R, not soft R. Yeah, that was very silly. Of course. I don't even know that a soft R really means very much, but silent R is indeed a feature of many British accents. Okay, being, it could be an entity. So this would be a being, a noun, as opposed to um, being. What part of speech would being be? An adverb? I actually don't know. Uh, just so. So if something is just so, it's to a T, it's, it's, uh, it's polished to a T, polished just so. Muletas are waved at them. Could this be referring to bullfighters, maybe? Toros? Maybe. Star and Canis Major, could this be serious? Blank Lala, 1964 hit. Shalala, does that sound right? Indexed data structures. Um, I think this would be arrays. So yeah, this might be toros actually. As if orchestrated. Not seeing it immediately. So what was this again? Blank lava. Yeah, maybe that is uh, as if orchestrated. Control time. I mean, I think this is something around um, doing things um, with a sort of spontaneous synchronicity or something. I mean, I think that's sort of what that's suggesting. Control tower installation. Maybe radar. I suppose. I suppose that would be. Do a double take, question mark. Do a double take as some kind of pun. Maybe it means another take on a film set or something like that, reshoot maybe, as opposed to a double take, meaning a sort of um, a, a, a look of surprise. Fourth person to walk on the moon. Oh, is it, is it Alan something? Is that? Go me. I rule, I suppose. Directly. Do. So in other words, do north. Directly north. Oh, could this be right? Oh, right on cue. I see. As if orchestrated. So it's as though it were all planned out. It happened right on cue. Um which you would say when something isn't actually on, literally been cued, but as though it had been. Oh, Sula, right? Is the Toni Morrison title heroine? Sorry, that was what I was trying to get at earlier. Sorry about that. Um, hot dog topper. So yes, it might've been, I suppose it is slaw. And then city nicknamed the old Pueblo must be Tucson. And let's see, what is this? Have I looked at this? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, so 
I was confused by the HK here. And now that I see if I put the K back in, then this person must be known as Coach K, which makes sense given that their surname begins with K. So that's that's fine. Oh, an opposite of never is each time, which is always, which is one of the things I said. And I should have sat around and thought of some synonyms for always. And get to move on quaintly is in fact highs. So this this actually was I think basically in the right direction over there. Okay, a Canon camera. I think I might know this. I think it's an maybe EOS, EOS, I think is a is the brand of a Canon camera line. House Republican VIP Stefanik. Don't think I know that person. It might be put on this put on for stage pageantries. Oh, um, grease paint, I think. Fourth person to walk on the moon. Senator, e.g., for short. Boy, I do think this is Allen, but NH. Could this be a sports league? Could it be an NHLer? To be hopping mad. Have we looked at this yet? House Republican VIP Stefanik. So it could be Elise. I mean, that's a name. It's plausible. What about this? Boot. Uh, almost. Almost near. Nearly almost. What makes Shrek shriek? Boy, I don't know. I think I saw Shrek. I assume this is referring to Shrek the film. It could be referring to Shrek the children's book that predates the film. I don't remember if there's a thing that makes Shrek shriek in the film. Um, I just don't remember. One side in a debate. Uh, I suppose a debate would be pro and con classically. So con, I suppose. It may be blown. Pass. Uh, so this could be pass a bill into law to enact. What makes Shrek shriek? Oh, very clever. Aha. And I, and I turns Shrek into shriek. Very good. I like it. It may be blown. Oh, TNT, I suppose, an explosive. Uh, let's see, member of a noble family. Oh, so this would be a, a, a noble gas, I assume, from the periodic table. So uh, xenon, I believe, is a noble gas. And then to boot is to expel. Uh, and then here we have this again, Elise. So what is this? Be hopping mad. Oh, boil. Oh, boy. Could it be be hopping mad to, to, to boil? Yes. Okay, that was uh, that was a very fun puzzle. I absolutely adore this uh, theme, this resettling letterings. So we have 2004 film about a group of maligners. Maligners becomes Mean Girls. Pageantries becomes Grease Paint. Marveling at becomes Maglev Train. That is amazing. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, marveling at is a bit less directly, I think, um, relevant to the answer relative to some of these, for instance. Maligners really is directly Mean Girls. Pageantry is Grease Paint. That's that's pretty direct. Um, schematic and Catechism is pretty good. Maglev Train and Marveling At, not, not as direct, but I just love that they got Maglev Train into, into an anagram. That's incredible. I absolutely love it. And then we had Instigated Dating Site. Fair enough. A wide birth, white bread. Uh, noiseless lionesses. I really like that one. Untraversed and adventurers. That one is incredible. I mean, I suppose quite a few of them don't necessarily directly relate, right? I mean, a wide birth and white bread, not really rel related to one another. Instigated and dating site, not really related to one another. I don't hold that against it at all. I think this is an incredible execution. Uh, but it makes the it makes the clues that do match the uh, the answers all the more impressive. Um, 
Mean Girls, Adventurers, Lionesses to some degree. I think Noiseless and Lionesses is sort of evocative and and uh, potent. Graphically and calligraphy, that's very good. And Foresight and Gift Horse. I mean, Foresight and Gift Horse is pretty good, actually, because even aside from the Trojan thing, the notion of looking a gift horse in the mouth, that is sort of about foresight. I mean, it's it's in, in a way that's suggesting you shouldn't, I suppose, try and have foresight around this thing in the, I mean, in the classical saying, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, but, uh, but with foresight and gift horse and then the Trojan thing, very good. What a fantastic, what a fantastic theme. What a great puzzle. I really enjoyed this enormously. And I didn't, I don't really think there was much in here that threw up considerable long-term blockages. Um, I had to struggle against my own blockages in my brain. That's, that is certainly true. I had, had some uh, not very impressive moments, but I really enjoyed the puzzle. I think it was a, a pretty good, smooth puzzle. I mean, honestly, Sunday puzzles are so, they're they're so long. I don't think I ever really got stuck for very long in this puzzle, and it still took me forty minutes, right? I mean, so I I honestly I appreciate when a Sunday puzzle um, isn't too challenging, to be totally honest, because I do want to get it get it over with. <laughs> so, and and what a pleasure this theme was. I just absolutely adored it. So, well done, Stephen McCarthy, and thank you for joining me on this. Uh, well, what for me is a late night Sunday puzzle and for you hopefully isn't one. Um, well, late night Saturday, I guess where I am now. So thank you so much for joining me for another edition of the Daily Solve. If you enjoyed this video and you aren't already subscribed to the channel, why not subscribe to the channel? And then you will see these videos as each one is posted every morning as, um, each time, <laughs> each time a video is posted, if you subscribe to the channel, you will see it the opposite of never. You'll see it each time. And if you think someone else might enjoy this video each time, or even if you think they might only enjoy it a few times, why not pass it on to them? Uh, you never know. They might like it as well. And finally, if you like it quite a bit and you would like to become invested in the ongoing sustainability of this series, it would be hugely meaningful if you could just toss a couple of quid or a few bucks, either on a uh, one-off or monthly recurring basis via my coffee donation page, which is linked in the description field underneath each one of these videos. And thank you so much to everybody who has done so. Uh, it really is incredibly appreciated. It means a lot to me. So thank you so much. And with that, I will take off. I will go as we approach midnight. I'm going to go and get some sleep. And um, I hope you have an excellent Sunday. And I hope to see you tomorrow for uh, a nice, easy Monday puzzle to get the week going. Until then, take care. <laughs>